Now, <coughs> so, there was once a man called Arngrim and a woman called Aethyrna. And together they ruled over vast lands in Gardariki, which is what's now called Russia. And Arngrim had been given the rulership of these lands by Aethyrna's father, who had been a wise and renowned and fierce king, who had won renown through spreading his rule across wide, wide, wide parts of the world. And he was never beaten in battle. And the reason for this was because he bore a sword called Turfing. And this sword, Turfing, they said it had a hilt of gold, a handle to match, and the blade shone like daylight. And it could not be drawn without causing the death of someone. And it would cut mail like cloth. But they say that this sword had a curse placed upon it. For the old king had gained this sword in mysterious circumstances that were told of in legend. And it was said that this sword might well one day be the cause of three foul deeds. And that its edges were poisoned so that just the barest scratch was enough to cause death to whoever it touched. And after the old king had settled down and handed on the rule of all his lands to Arngrim, he had also handed him down this sword. Now, Arngrim and Aethyrna, they had children. They had twelve sons. Twelve sons who grew tall and strong and became warriors like their father before them. And the eldest and the most famed was Angantyr, and after him there was Hjorvard, and Hervard, and Hrani, and on, and on, and on, right down to the two youngest, the two Haddings, who it was said had but the strength of half a man each, but one man between them. And Angantyr, the eldest, had the strength of two, so it all balanced itself out. But... <laughs> These sons, all 12 of these sons, when they grew to manhood and they went out to the field of battle, then they became berserkers. A word still spoken of in hushed tones nowadays. Warriors who would feel a fit come upon them and who became like wild beasts and who would froth and foam and spit and frenzy and go into such a rage that it was like a storm swept through the battle. And as such, these 12 berserker brothers, they gained fame even more than their father or their grandfather before them. And they were feared across the world and they never lost in battle. One winter, at Yuletide, the night when people would swear oaths, then the second of these brothers, Hjorvar, he lifted the cup and he declared that if he was to marry, he would marry none other, none other than Ingibjorg, the daughter of the King of Sweden, for he had heard that she was the fairest of all women. And the oath was sworn, and so... When the seaways cleared, all twelve brothers gathered together and they set off for Uppsala, the old capital of Sweden, where they entered the king's hall and they were greeted with all the respect that warriors who were known to commit such fearful deeds could expect. And the feast went on long into the night and as was the custom of those times it was only after the feasting was done that the king of Sweden asked what had brought these travellers here. And Hjorvard stood up and he declared that I have sworn I will marry Ingebjörg, your daughter. Now the king of Sweden, he did not want to get on the wrong side of the twelve famed berserkers and so, so he was minded to agree. But Ingebjörg, Ingebjörg stood up and said, Father, Father, I am not sure that I agree to this. And a voice came from the back of the hall, echoing her. 
And this, this is Hjalma. Now Hjalma and his good friend Odd, who is known as Arrow Odd, they too were great warriors who had travelled the world, and they had lived at the King of Sweden's Hall for many a long year, and they had become two of his stoutest champions. And Hjalmar stood and he said, My liege, I declare too that I do not think this fair, because have I not long served you loyally, and have I not won great victories in your name, and have I not long admired Ingeborg, myself. If anyone was to marry her, then it should be me. And now the king of Sweden, he did not want to get caught <laughs> into a big argument between two such, two such fierce warriors, and so he decided to let Ingeborg decide, and she chose Hjalmar. But when Hjalvard and all the other berserker brothers heard this. Then they were all on their feet and they were raging. And Hjalvar declared that he would not stand for this. He had sworn an oath and he would keep his word. And so he challenged Hjalmar to a duel that they would meet on the island of Samsi. And there they would fight to the death. And the winner of that combat would be the one to marry Ingibjorg. But, he said, you must not make any step towards her before that fight is done. For if you were to do so, I would say to all the world why that you, Hjalma, are nothing short of a coward. So it was. All departed to make their preparations. The twelve brothers sailed back home <coughs> to Arnbrim's Hall. But on the way, on the way, they stopped for the night at the Hall of Earl Bjarma, where Angantyr, the eldest of the twelve brothers, met Svafa, the Earl's daughter, and they fell in love. And that very night they were married. And the next morning, Angantyr came to his new father in law and he said, Father, I am troubled by a strange dream. I dreamt that myself and my eleven brothers, we came to an island, and there we found but a flock of birds, and we fell upon them and we slaughtered the flock easily. But, but then two eagles came, and one faced off against my brothers and one me alone, and those two eagles, I fear they were the death of us. And his father-in-law, Earl Biyama, said, It's not hard to see the meaning of this dream. You have seen the death of great men. And with that, Angantir and his brothers had to carry on their way back to their father's hall, where they made their preparations, polishing their armour, girding themselves, training their bodies ready face their foes. And when it came to them to leave, then Arngrim came to Angantir, the eldest of the lot, and said, my son, you go to face the famed warriors. Hjalmar and Arrowod are known to be heroes true. I think you might need this. And he gave Angantir the sword to think. With Turfing at his side, Angantir boarded the ship. His brothers came with him and they sailed long nights across the icy Baltic until they saw grey on the horizon the Isle of Samsi. And they circled the coast looking for a cove to land. And it was then that they saw two ships at anchor. And they said to each other, these must be the ships of Hjalmar and Arrowod and their followers. What if we were to fall upon those ships now and kill all that they hold before anyone has even set foot on the island? A great and swift victory would be ours. And so they landed their ships and they stepped down upon the gravel shore. 
and there they drew their swords and they beat their chests and they bit the edges of their shields and they worked themselves into the battle frenzy and the fit came upon them and like beasts they threw themselves onto the boats and they slaughtered every last man that they found there and the blood ran across the decks and the sea was stained dark. And they staggered out onto the shore once more and the fit left them and they became weak as if they'd suffered a great illness. It was only then that they saw two figures standing high on the hillside. And Hjalmar and Arrow Odd looked down upon them and they said to each other, Twelve brothers have come. The time for the battle is nigh. Which of us should fight whom? Because, Hjalmar said, my quarrel is with Hjorvar there, but Angantyr is known to be the greatest warrior among them. And his friend, his good friend Arrow Odd said, well, let me then fight Angantyr so that you may have the victory and defeat your rival and go and marry Faye and Gibjorg. But Hjalmar said, hold, 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 hold there. I know your game. You are seeking the greater glory, you, to be the one who defeated mighty Angantyr. No, no, I shall be the one. I shall face him. You deal with the rest of the brothers. And so they marched down the hillside to where the twelve brothers realised that they must find some strength from somewhere. And they hauled themselves to their feet and they tried to ready themselves. And Hjalmar threw himself against all eleven of the brothers who waited there for him while... I've got that wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much happening in this story. What really happened, what really happened was that Arrow Odd faced all those eleven brothers while Hjalmar, Hjalmar squared off against <coughs> Angantyr himself, who though he was weakened by the leaving of the berserk fit, he still wielded turfing in his hand and he stood as straight and true as he could as his enemy came towards him. And they clashed and they fought and that battle lasted all that great long day until the clouds came with night and the wind swept in in the evening. And at the end of that day, then Arrowod had slain Hjorvard and Hervard and Hrani and all of the other eleven brothers right down to the two Haddings. But... Hjalmar and Angantyr still fought on and they fought into the darkness as the moon rose from behind the clouds and the rain started to pelt their faces. But as the first rays of the sun started to rise, then it was Angantyr who fell, wounded, sore, dead in the stones of the beach. And Arrowod ran to his friend Hjalmar and he caught him as he fell. And he looked and he remembered the stories that that sword turfing, its edges were poisoned so that but one scratch was enough to kill whoever it touched. And he saw that Hjalmar bore 16. And Hjalmar put his hand round his friend's shoulders and he sang his death song and he sang out once I owned five farms that was never enough for me now I must lie of life deprived sword maimed on Samsi Isle take this red gold ring from my hand and bring it to young Ingebjorg that grief will fix fast in her mind that I'll not come to Uppsala Raven flies from the east from his lofty tree. After him, the eagle in escort flies to that last eagle. I leave my flesh an ill banquet upon the blood of me. 
so it was that Jonah died. And of all the warriors who went to Samzi Isle, Aroot was the only one to return home. And they say when Ingebjorg heard the news of what had happened, then so distraught was she that she hung herself to her own way. Aroot went off into his own saga. But in this one, back at the hall of Earl Bjarma, his daughter, Svafa, married but one night and widowed now, was with child. She had a daughter growing in her belly. A daughter who would be called Hervor, and who would grow every bit as wild and fearsome as her father had been. And when she came of age, and she heard the tale of her father and uncle last stand, then she would join a Viking ship, and she would sail the raging seas until she came to the island of Samsi, where the burial mounds of her father and uncles waited in the gathering night. And she would seek to wake dead men to reclaim the sword that was her inheritance. But the sword would still bring with it its curse. And if you want to know more, then please <laughs> come and see the rest of the story. Thank you very much.